Andy, you were you were born in New York, but your parents were from Ireland. Can you tell me a little bit about them and uh, whether they were musicians and just the musical thing in your house, whether it was there when you were growing up and all of that kind of thing? Well, my parents were both came from County Sligo in Ireland. Uh, my father was from around Ballymote in Sligo, and uh, my mother came from a place called Tubbercurry. Uh, and uh, my mother, neither one of them played uh, music, actually played an instrument, but uh, my father had a lot of music in his head and he could whistle a lot of tunes and he said he always missed the opportunity, he never had the opportunity to, to play an instrument, but he did have the music uh, in him. Right? Mm -hmm. But how I first came to hear, of course, they, this, they all have had the radio programs, the Irish radio programs on, and uh, it was the first music I ever heard or became. And then they, they used to visit with, uh, some friends of theirs. The man of the house played a fiddle, and uh, it, the fiddle was the first instrument I ever came close to. Came, so I, I often wonder if I had seen a, a, a flute, a flute play. I, I might be a flute player today, or <laughs> or maybe an accordionist. Do you not feel there's more an element of chance uh, involved there in picking up the fiddle? Uh, chance? No. Yeah, that it, that that it's not just chance. Do you feel now that uh, that the fiddle is closer to you than any other instrument? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Were there, were there other musicians in and out of your household? Um, was your household one where musicians would visit when you were young? And uh, no, no. Who who was no, the yeah, first? Uh, who was the first person who introduced you in any formal way? Music lessons or classes? Or? It was Michael Coleman. Um, my father knew Michael Coleman uh, uh, in Ireland, and. Uh, um, he brought Michael around to the house, actually, to, to begin with, but Michael was never very good with beginners. I mean. <laughs> so the... Uh, uh, I, f I first took formal lessons from Catherine Brennan, uh, who also had taken some lessons from Michael Coleman. And, uh, um, so what age were you when Coleman started to visit, visit the house? You weren't an absolute beginner, of course, at that stage. Uh, no, later on, yeah. I was about 12 or so, 12 years old. Yeah. Would he stay what, long what? when he visited? Oh, he'd stay for a week or so and uh, then be off and then come back again uh, for another week. And, uh, and what, what were those visits like for you now as a 12, 13, 14 year old with uh, this very important musician in the house? Did you play much together? And we did, yes. We played quite a bit together. Of uh, uh, course, I was going to school at the time, and, and Michael would uh, would ask him what what tune I wanted to learn. So he left it up to me, and uh, or if he he played some particular tune that I liked, I'd, I'd tell him I'd want to learn that. You know, so he'd have it written out for me by the time I came back from school. He could uh, he could write music. Very neatly and very well, but uh, it just take him a long time to do it. And <laughs> he'd spend hour, a couple of hours at it, but uh, he'd have it ready for me when, by the time I returned from school. So, and, uh, now, where did you learn to read music, Andy? Then, and you were able to read. Well, I, I had first learned it when uh, when I took lessons from Catherine, Catherine Brennan. Brennan. Yeah. Yeah. So, would, would had Coleman the patience then with you to slow the tune down or anything, or would he expect you to to have worked on the music manuscript he left behind for the next time he came around? Or uh, yeah, he he he'd understand. Uh, well, I, at that time I could I could do a fair job of playing uh, and picking it up very quickly, even by ear, but. Uh, uh, we'd work on it together uh, slowly at first, and then uh, I, I'd usually have it off and after two or three times, <laughs> and uh, we could play it at full speed then. <laughs> so this was what? Uh, not it wasn't long after that that Coleman died. How? how? 
This was, was towards the end of Coleman's life, wasn't it? Yes, it was about uh, four years later when he died, four or five years later. And had he recordings of his in the house when he would visit? And would he bring recordings or anything like that? Would you mm, we, we had them, we had the old 78 recordings. Uh, we had already had them, he didn't have to. Did he ever listen to his own recordings in your house while he was there? Or did you ever hear him talking about his recordings? or What did he think of them? I, I can't recall that we ever listened to his recordings because he was there himself to play. Or, and, <laughs> uh, I can't recall him ever talking about them either. No. So you were in your... Possibly we uh, did. Were well, you in mid-teens or something like that when he died? I was about 16. I think, yeah. mm. So all in all, Michael Coleman ha had a major impact on your musical life. Oh, yes. yes Did you find yourself subsequently going back and listening to his recordings and the, a yes. lot? And to, mm. 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 Oh, yeah. And it must have been a great, uh, um, a great thing to have known the man personally. So when you go back and listen to these recordings now, you can connect it up with the person you knew. Yes. Uh -huh. um. Have you, have you, um, do you still go back and listen to Coleman's records? No, I don't even think I, I would have a recording right mm -hmm. now, because uh, all the old 78 records, are, they used to, they break very easily. <laughs> and uh, I think I did have a, a later recording, and I probably still have it, around, um, a long play record, which they, but I haven't listened to it in years. I, I couldn't recall the last time I played it. The meeting here over this weekend of, of so many fiddlers and it seems to have been very significant for people. Uh, what, is, what has it meant for you, meeting all these players again? Is it important for people now to, uh, to actually meet in, in this way and play sessions? Or? It was quite extraordinary, I thought, uh, to have all those fiddlers all together at one time. And, uh, Quite a quite a, uh, a thrilling event, I say, an exciting event. I don't know when it'll be, it could happen again. Or, but, uh, but, um, the uh, solos you played uh, last night, you mentioned that uh, you mentioned the title of the of the air. You played an air last night in your solo in the concert. Yes. Can you tell me just a little bit about that air? I I can't tell you very much about it. Only the, the first one I ever heard play, and the only person I ever heard play it was was Sean McGuire, and he called it the Gala Clement. And, uh, and you follow that with a set of dance tunes, which yes, can you remember what they were? A set of reels. The first one was called the Lads of Leash, and uh, the second one was the first month of summer. Well, maybe we can end now by asking you to play, not that selection, because of course we have it from last night, but uh, something else of your choice, and you might tell us what it is. <laughs> well, I picked up a reel recently. It's, it's I, I don't believe it's, it's an Irish reel. It's, it's, it's a, uh, a Canadian reel or a Nova Scotian reel. It's called, but I'm taking a great liking to it, it's called St. Anne's reel. I'd try a bit of that if you want.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, you Miho. It's my pleasure to be with you. Thank you again. Thank you very much for coming. Right.